Hello, hello everybody. My number one goal in doing what I do is helping people get started and then successfully keep and breed cherry, aka Neocaridinia shrimp. And in my opinion, the biggest turtle that keeps new people from getting into the hobby and having folks leave the hobby is shrimp dying. <laughs> Obviously, it sucks big time when shrimp die. I see people every day that say, that's it, that's it, I'm done, I'm out. Shrimp keeping just isn't for me. And that is with both people who are just starting out and can't successfully get started, and with people who have already been successfully keeping shrimp, then have a catastrophe happen where a bunch of shrimp die. Either way, shrimp dying is obviously very, very discouraging. So in this video, I want to cover what I think are the top reasons why shrimp die. Being in the position that I am in, I get the opportunity to help lots of different people in lots of different situations with their shrimp. I see a lot of, I don't see it <laughs> technically, but I hear about a lot of different problems people have with shrimp tanks. And the top reasons I have found shrimp to die are water parameter changes. Notice I said changes, not having not perfect. <laughs> Ammonia or tank cycle issues, meaning ammonia poisoning, nitrate poisoning, and then toxins and our poisons, mainly from things like pesticides, but it could be candles or smelly good stuff like that. First, let's talk about parameter changes. Cherry shrimp can adjust to a huge, I mean, huge, huge range of different water parameters. So when it comes to neocaridinia, again, AKA cherry shrimp, they're about the same thing. <laughs> Having water parameters that are perfect is much, much, much less important than having water parameters that are stable. In fact, I see lots and lots of people who already have successful shrimp colonies, but they think they can do better because their water, water parameters are not perfect. So they do all sorts of different things trying to reach perfect. And they end up killing lots of shrimp in the process. Even though their water is technically better by the book, the shrimp still die and struggle. Again, cherry shrimp can adapt to most any water conditions. Once your shrimp get settled in and start breeding, you're better off just to maintain what you already have than trying to change things to chase perfect parameters. So what can you do to keep your parameters stable? For one thing, if your shrimp are starting to breed, do nothing. Understand, it's a natural progression with folks as hobbyists. Many times we get our first shrimp, throw them in tap water, and they start breeding and doing good. And as we get deeper and deeper into the hobby, we learn that what the perfect water parameters are, and then realize the tap water they've been doing good in is far from perfect. <laughs> So we change things and end up messing everything up. Even though our water is technically better, changing things messed it all up. Smaller, more frequent water changes can help keep parameters stable. This is especially important if you have a questionable water source that changes. So if your water source, you got, if your water out of the tap isn't always consistent and steady, then you're gonna end up having problems. I've had several people who are still learning start off keeping their shrimp in tap water. Then they think they're doing good for their shrimp to do water changes with bottled water. I mean, to us as people, we drink bottled water because it usually is more drinkable than tap water. So to someone new, it may seem that adding bottled water to their shrimp tank would be a good thing. Chances are the bottled water and tap water have vastly, vastly different water parameters. So while you may think you're helping your shrimp with better water, the changes in water parameters are doing more damage than good. So, same thing applies if you're using reverse osmosis and a remineralizer to make your own shrimp tank water. We need to make sure that the water going in is the same water that was already in there. So, we need to make sure our testing procedures and devices are as accurate and calibrated as possible. Either way, it is always important to remember that the water going back in is the same as the water that's already in there. Consistency is always much better than perfect when it comes to cherry shrimp. So the next thing I wanna talk about is ammonia, which relates to the nitrogen cycle. 
First thing I ask new shrimp keepers who have problems with shrimp dying is if their tank is cycled. Ammonia and nitrites are extremely deadly to all critters in our tanks. Although I do not recommend it, many people who are used to keeping fish have set up new tanks. They're in some super tough fish and they can oftentimes survive the ammonia while the tank is cycling. This is called a fish in cycle. Well, shrimp are not tough enough when it comes to ammonia, and this method of cycling a tank definitely will not work with shrimp. There is so much information out there regarding cycling a tank, and this video is not about that. Since this is an issue that beginners run into, you need to make sure you fully understand and do your research on what it, it means for your tank to be fully cycled before you ever get shrimp. Toxins and poisons is the last thing I will talk about, but this is the main reason I made this video. I wanted to cover this topic. There are two things I want to talk about when it comes to toxins and poisons with shrimp. The first thing I want to talk about is for folks who do not have luck keeping shrimp in their tap water. And the second is poisoning from pesticides. I have seen cherry shrimp thrive in a huge range of parameters, like I mentioned earlier. However, there are some folks out there who just cannot figure out why their shrimp keep dying. They have a properly cycled tank. They may even have been successfully keeping fish in the tank. But shrimp always die. Many times these folks go through the whole bit of testing all the parameters that your normal shrimp keeper checks on. KH, GH, PH, and even TDS, and so on. After testing their tap water for the standard shrimp parameters, they see that their parameters are in acceptable ranges or close to it. So why do their shrimp keep dying? Some tap water is just not suitable to keep shrimp in, and it's because of a toxin or poison. More times than not with shrimp, it can be dissolved metals or other pollutants that end up in our water supplies. And it's not always an acute poisoning, meaning that they die, they all die within hours after being put in the water. You can look at the effects of toxins in tap water affecting your shrimp on a spectrum. <clears throat> the worst being they die within hours, to the least being getting buried females, but very few baby shrimp surviving to adulthood, and everything in between. So if you're using tap water, your tank is cycled, and all your parameters are at least kind of close, then you very well may be dealing with toxins in your tap water. When you run into this, the solution is to use reverse osmosis to strip the water of everything, then use a shrimp remineralizer to add the minerals the shrimp need back in. If your tap water is toxic to shrimp, it really is your only option. Now, the main reason I wanted to make this video is to talk about a big a danger, how big of a danger pesticides are to our shrimp. The main reason I wanted to talk about it is because it is something that is fresh on my mind. The end of summer is here, and as the weather starts cooling off in the late summer and fall, in my part of the world, it is peak flea season for my dogs and cats. It is important to remember that shrimp are essentially water bugs. The same stuff that kills bugs does the same thing to our shrimp. It kills them. <laughs> I have many stories to share of people killing every shrimp they own with pesticides. So I'll share some of the ones that stand out most to me. So, there's a guy who lives just around the corner from me. I didn't even know he was there. Or, and I was looking on my local Facebook marketplace. And so I was like, where do you live? Turns out he lived literally like a block and around the corner from me. So, and he, I helped him get started. He ended up buying hundreds and hundreds of dollars of shrimp off me. He had all kinds of shrimp from lots of different places and he was really starting, he's, he was selling them and trying to become a breeder and doing good for himself. Well, his dogs had fleas and his wife, not knowing any better, let off a bug bomb in the house. Now, a lot of people may realize this isn't a good idea, but if you don't know, then you don't know. And he had, I think he had over a dozen tanks with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shrimp for thousands of dollars that he had already invested into this. And a couple of bug bombs, it was all history. Everything died, nothing lived at all. So there is that. Here's another story. A cat who was freshly treated with 
flea medication, the topical flea medication, something like Advantage, or that's what we use or have used. Well, you know how cats are crazy and like to crawl, crawl around and <laughs> mess around their tanks. At least mine do. Well, a freshly treated cat fell into the tank and everything in the tank was dead. And because of this guy's story, from now on, with my cats especially, they no longer get topical flea meds. They, I give them flea pills. So, because I do have one of my cats falls in, <laughs> has fallen in a tank a couple of times. Another situation. Landlord treating for bugs while you're gone and you don't even know they're going to treat. So, a lot of times, like if you live in apartment buildings or apartment complexes or even if you're renting a house, the landlord, if they're good, I mean, they're trying to be good landlords, they're going to come through and do a pesticide treatment, treat your house for bugs on a schedule many times. So every three months, six months, a year, whatever it is, maybe every spring, treat for ants, do whatever they do. Well, if you're new and your landlord doesn't know that you have stuff in there, that the treatments are going to hurt your shrimp, then because a lot of times people don't even know it's going to happen. So if you are renting a place, you need to make sure your landlord knows. Please do not use pesticides. Or if they are, please let me know. And then really, when it comes to shrimp, it's really pretty tough. I've heard of people shutting all their air off, covering their tanks with plastic bags, and still ended up having shrimp die. So these pesticides are very, very deadly for shrimp. And then another closely related story to that is, I remember a guy, he was a shrimp breeder, he was renting a house, and he had his whole shrimp breeding operation in the basement. Well, landlord had pest control come out, and all they did is spray around the outside of the house. Well, you know how basements are, and you got the window that's at ground level. Well, when they come through and sprayed that, somehow a little bit made it through the window, everything died complete total loss this guy made his living doing this he lost it all and scented candles and other smelly good things can cause problems as well so <laughs> my, we used to burn candles and my wife used to be on the be into all that kind of stuff well i'm a i'm a real stickler about stuff that goes in the house i even get on my daughters for spraying too much perfume so i mean this is part of it. Shrimp are really sensitive to some of these kinds of things. So hopefully, by me sharing these stories with you, I mean, I know it makes me super aware, and hopefully it helps you guys be super aware that these things are dangerous and we need to be aware of them, of the danger they pose, and at least let people know that we live with or our landlords or whoever owns our property know that there's something here that we need to be aware of. Shrimp are extremely sensitive when it comes to pesticides and we must do everything we can to be aware of how these pesticides can affect our shrimp and how to protect them from it. Not only do I have cats and dogs with fleas to worry about, but before I started breeding shrimp full time, I was a professional licensed pesticide handling applicator. I had my tanks and handled pesticides daily for years and was always very aware of their dangers. I mean, it was my job that I had to take classes for every year, so I was always super cautious. I used to come home covered in bug spray from being out in the woods dealing with ticks and butt mosquitoes and all that fun stuff, while I was applying hundreds of gallons of herbicides and utility right away. So I come home covered in bug spray and herbicide. So I was covered in chemicals that could kill shrimp and plants on a daily basis. To say I was a paranoid mess would be an understatement. I had to go to great lengths to make sure none of those herbicides affected my shrimp tanks. The clothes I worked in always went straight into plastic trash bags, didn't come out until they went to my washing machine. I always scrub my hands and expose skin with Dawn dish soap, and then take a shower every time I came home from work. It was a whole process of cleansing myself before I ever even thought of touching any of my tanks. So again, in my opinion, the three biggest reasons shrimp die are water parameter changes, problems with the tank being cycled causing ammonia poisoning, and last but certainly not least is toxins and poisons. 
I really wanted to take the time to make you guys aware of the pesticide issues as it's something many people may not even think of. And I have been, and I have seen the devastating consequences it can have over and over again. So hopefully this video helps someone. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.